Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat, and this is your weekly encouragement. Hey, so this week I've been thinking a lot about the grace and mercy of God and how that impacts the life of believers. As I began to look through it, um, the passage that keep coming back and back and back is Isaiah chapter 55. Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah 55 says this. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Which is if you have made mistakes and are looking for a pardon, there's a couple things you have to do. Number one, let the wicked forsake their ways, right? Change the thing that you're doing. And if you have an unrighteous thought, you need to turn away from the thought, those thoughts. When you do that, God has compassion on us and he will abundantly pardon all of our shortcomings. That's massively encouraging in the life of a believer where we are constantly constantly going through this cycle of repentance, realizing full well that God will have actual compassion on you. Now that may bring you to the question, what exactly is an unrighteous thought and exactly what are his ways, right? What am I supposed to turn back to? And Isaiah doesn't leave us hanging. He goes on in verse eight and he says this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways declares the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater I love this as well. God says, you don't have to worry about making me happy. See, my ways are higher than your ways. So do the things that I have declared to you, those things will work. And then he uses this amazing example of rain and snow, always watering and replenishing the earth before it goes back to the heavens to do it again. Not the kind of thing that mankind thought up. It's the kind of thing that God thought up. It's well beyond on us. Talk about security, that God is not going to leave us in the lurch. And the last thing that Isaiah wants to point out is that the Word of God, now we have the Word of God in the 66 books of the Bible, and so when I refer to the Word of God, that's usually what I'm referring to. Isaiah was still in the process of helping be a part writer of the Torah, so they were still receiving the Word. We have the benefit of looking back. But Isaiah says the Word of the Lord never returns void. I'm gonna show it to you. It's, it's one of my most quotable verses in the entire Bible. It's Isaiah 55. We'll do just verse 11. It says this. So my word be, which goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. If you've ever been in a position in your life where you're looking for God's guidance or you're attempting to perhaps comfort someone or look for an answer in your life and someone will quote um, a Bible verse to you, you might go, wow, that's really pithy. You don't want to actually engage with me. But to be completely honest, they're actually using Isaiah 55. The word of the God does not return void. It does the thing it was meant to do. So whenever you are in out. I encourage you to do uh, what I attempt to do in my life, which is look to the word of God first. Let it encourage me and speak those words into your life, into the lives of those around you, because the word of God does not return void. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging to you as it has been to me. I will see you right back here next week for next week's encouragement. God bless. Be encouraged.